Hark McLeonitz. I'm a researcher from the University of Georgia. I'm a researcher in interactive narrative and I'm going to talk about my work um, with ASAPS. That's uh, an offering system that I created. Um, ASAP stands for um, Advanced Stories um, Presentation and Offering System. Um, this is a schema of uh, the overall architecture um, based on an idea of, or a concept rather, of um, interactive narrative as uh, consisting of system, process, and product. The overall system consists of um, the Advanced Stories Builder, the offering tool, which creates um, XML documents, which are then played back by um, the AS playback engine. Right now there's uh, three different implementations of that on Mac, Windows, and um, the latest, latest edition is an iOS playback engine. Um, and the playback engine is also used in debugging. And now the very latest edition is an analytics backend that basically relates all the user events as data and locks that into a database so I can um, analyze what users are doing here. All right, um, SX comes with a user-friendly, user-oriented offering tool, which looks uh, like we see here. Um, it um, creates um, graphical representations of um, the narratives um, these representations uh, look like this branching um, structure that we see here. Um, so far, uh, over 80 narratives have been created with ASAPS. Um, I use it for teaching in my class, for example, and ASAPS is in use at, for example, Alberg University in Copenhagen. And, um, National University of, of Singapore and some other places like University of Alberta and Canada and Reykjavik University in Iceland. Um, the overall concept um, is like dividing an interactive narrative in four different um, high-level categories uh, called settings, um, notes and props as basically passive um, assets and um, characters as active assets and then the concept of beats. Um, beats are atomic narrative units um, and then on top of that there's also procedural elements in assets. Talking about beats, right now there are 14 different types of beats. Beats are, for example, things like a conversation choice, where the user becomes a number of, of utterances to click on. Um, there's a navigation uh, beat, a navigation choice beat, where I could click on different locations. There's a pick prop beat, where I can click on an item, which then becomes part of the user's inventory. Um, and there's beats like an end beat that restarts the game and, and um, then also um, resets all the values. Um, there's a duration screen beat that basically just continues after a predetermined um, delay. And um, you basically combine these different beats to form a full narrative. There's also invisible beats that do things behind the scenes. Um, they work with procedural values. In with that, you can, for example, check um, the status um, of, of the inventory. If a, char if a character has a certain item, you can check um, something like a timer running, or you can track um, a certain progression of a character trait. Talking more about these procedural elements, first of all, there's these tracking counting systems, and you can use that for something like, oh, um, this um, a character has, let's say, the trait of timid, um, aggressive, or uh, let's say flirtatious, 
And when every action that, that you do, every choice that a user makes would feed into the system and would accumulate these three different counters. And so you can procedurally then at one point in time determine and, and, and branch depending on this state of these counters um, and say, oh, we, we created a timid character, let's go into this trajectory, for example. Another um, thing that, um, and yeah, every um, choice can feed into them, and you could even accumulate these, um, these trackers over several runs. It does not have to be reset um, per se. When, yes, you have an inventory, I think that's, that's pretty clear. Um, I can check for the presence of things in inventory. Um, one character can give something to another character. On top of that, there's timers, and I think that's a very exciting function to use. You can put the user under time pressure. Um, you can have local timers and global timers. Uh, global timers can, can do something like, oh, you have three minutes to break into a bank, or you're being arrested. Um, a local timer would be just like, okay, you have 10 seconds to make a choice here, and if not, uh, things will just con continue automatically. Um, and then you have global variables, which are things that you can use for um, just memorizing that certain events have basically happened. Okay, um, the execution of the system is from beat to beat and um, can be uh, turn-based, so waiting for the user at every um, uh, turning point, but it can also go on its own and can be time-based. In branching is procedural and uh, meaning it can branch depending on the state of the overall experience. Um, what I'm working on lately is more the idea of introducing something that I would like to call a remote beat, something that would basically send the state to an external um, server that would process that in some way and then send back well-formed XML and then the story would continue according to that. And that would basically open my system to the interaction with any kind of other system. Visually, I mean, it's, it's a 2D system but it can have very different looks. It can uh, apply um, video, it can apply static graphics, it has a uh, free channel sound support. Um, yeah, the look is really totally up to the uh, author. Some use photography, some things have been hand drawn by authors, some things are, are look more like, like commercial games, some, uh, some look a little more, I'd say, avant-garde in a sense. And here is, is an example, um, this is done in the um, popular 8-bit style, um, basically with jacket edges, and um, this is the one, most extensive narrative done so far with 367 beats, and it's, it's a story where you find yourself on a ship, and after a while you realize that this is actually the ship to the afterworld, and maybe there's a way you can still escape it. Um, a Day in the Life is, is done by a student and deals with the ever so popular question I can't remember last night, how do I figure it out now? And um, is actually shot in real locations in Athens, Georgia. And the superhero story is um, puts us in the situation of. Um, not a superhero, a superheroine, and, and she's like, um, can become evil or, or nice depending on the user's choices. Um, narrative structures, if you think that this is sort of a conventional narrative structure, a fright hacking art, what we find in SFs are more like structures like this one, or um, we go continue um, structures like that one, and this, Part of my research is to start looking at um, all the structures that come out of these narratives that are being created. Um, I wrote a paper comparing, um, doing an initial content analysis of about 60 narratives and um, trying to basically classify these different structures that we see coming out of that. And it's interesting that even though the structure is created automatically by the system, not by the author really, 
when we see some some traits like for example in this one um, this is a sort of a murder mystery based in an apartment and it turns out actually these different columns represent different rooms in that apartment. That's more or less what my system does.